Number one says select all expressions that are equivalent to the product of this these two binomials. Um, and you can multiply this in the box. Since all of these are kind of written out horizontally, I'm just going to do um, distributing. So I'm going to distribute 3 times negative 8, so that's negative 24, and then 3 times 2i, which is a positive 6i. Then distribute the negative 5i to each, so negative 5i times negative 8 is positive 40i. And then negative 5i times 2i is negative 10i squared. Then we know um, that we can simplify this i squared. So i squared is negative 1. So negative 10 times negative 1 will just make that positive 10. And then we can um, combine some of these. So negative 24 and positive 10 is negative 14. And 6i and 40i is plus 46i. So this would be our um, simplified version of this. And then we'll take a look at some of these others to see if any others are equivalent. So in this first one, and actually let me get this out of here so we can see our original. Um, so negative 24 plus 6i, this says minus 40i, and we have plus. So this one is not equivalent. This one um, combined the middle terms, which is 46i, so this is good. Um, and then it simplified this n term to not have the i squared in it, but we know that i squared is negative 1, so this final term simplifies to plus 10, um, so that's false. This next one, negative 24 plus 6i is good, plus 40i is good, and then minus 10i squared is what we had before we simplified that i squared. So this one is good. Negative 14 minus 34i, no, because it's, it's plus 46i, so this is bad, and so is this. F has our negative 24, which is good. It has our 46i, which is what these simplify to, so that's good. And then it has the plus 10, which is what this simplifies to when we simplify out the i squared. So F is good. G is a positive 46i, which we have, and a negative 14, so G is good. H would be wrong because we don't have that negative 34. Number two, explain or show how you would write this in this form. So we're actually going to have to multiply this out. I just did distributing on the last screen, so I'll do the box method on this one. So we would multiply 20 um, minus i times 8 plus 4i. So 20 times 8 is 160. 8 times negative i is negative 8i. 20 times 4i is 80i. And then 4i times negative i is negative 4i squared. If we simplify the i squared to a negative 1, this turns to plus 4. So then when we combine our 160 and our positive 4, we get 164. And then our 80i and our negative 8i is a positive 72i. So then we have it in this form, a plus bi. Number three, without going through all of the trouble of writing this left side in this form, meaning multiply it all the way out, how could we tell that the equation is false? Um, so we know from this screen that when we multiply out, we'll have this um, real number, but then this is also going to turn into a real number. These two don't change, however. So if I just looked at the i terms, negative 9 times negative 13i is a positive number, and 2i times 10 is a positive i number, and this is a negative. Well, we can't take a positive i plus a positive i and end up with a negative. So certainly something went wrong with those i terms. 
Number four, Andre spilled something on his math notebook and some parts of a problem he is working on were erased. Here's one of the problems. Um, what numbers could go in the blanks? So we're multiplying here. So we know that we're going to take this number and multiply it by this. And then we're going to end up um, taking this number and multiplying it here. That's going to give us this. So if we put, like, let's just pick a number here. So if I put um, 4 in here, 4 times 2i would be 8i. So now we have to figure out what we would put here so that we total negative 10i. So this number right here would need to be um, plus negative 18i to get down to negative 10i. So then I could put negative 9, or sorry, positive 9 here. So negative 2 times 9 would give us negative 18i. So 4 and 9 could go in there. So our two numbers that we could put are 4 and 9. Now are those the only numbers that could work? No. So then you could just come up with another example. So if we put, um, if I put like a negative 3 here, negative 3 times 2i would be negative 6i. So then what would we need to go in that other one to end up totaling negative 10i? So we would need this to be a negative 4i. And remember, we're doing negative 2i times that number. So then we would have to put a 2 in here because negative 2i times 2 would give us negative 4i. So you could also put in negative 3 um, and 2. So there's a bunch of different ways to do this. Um, they just have to multiply by these and add to negative 10i. Number five, find the exact solution to each equation or explain why there's no solution. So x squared equals 49. So x is going to equal the plus or minus square root of 49. So x is going to equal to positive or negative 7. Part B, um, to undo a cube, we do a cube root. So this x is just going to equal the cube root of 49. Part C, we know we can never square anything to get a negative number. So there's going to be no real solutions to this. And then part D, we certainly can cube a number to get a negative. Um, so this answer is just going to be the cube root of negative 49. Number six, write each expression in this form. And then if you want to, um, you, can, you can plot it in the complex plane, okay? Um, so I'm just going to distribute the two here. So 2 times 3 is 6, and 2 times 2i is 4i. And so actually, let me plot this original. So 3 um, plus 2i is here. So here's the original. So now this new one um, is going to be at 6, 4i for part A. B, we're just going to multiply this i into both pieces. So we get 3i um, plus 2i squared. Remember, i squared is negative 1, so this is really going to be negative 2 here. And then we still have that plus 3i. So if I plot that, negative 2 plus 3i is here. Uh, next one, we're going to distribute in a negative i. So we're going to get negative 3i, and we're going to get negative 2i squared. So when we do the i squared times negative 2, so negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2, and then we have the negative 3i. So we're going to be at 2, negative 3i. And then in this final one, we need to multiply these together. So we'll do 3 times 3, which is 9, 3 times 2i, which is 6i, negative 2i times 3, which is negative 6i, and then negative 2i times 2i, which is negative 4i squared. 
So these middles will cancel. Also, I squared is negative one. So negative one times negative four is positive four. And then nine plus four is 13. That's gonna be well off the grid over here. All right, in number seven, the table shows two investment account balances growing over time. Describe the pattern on how each account balance changed from one year to the next. So account A starts at $5,000, then it goes to 5.1,000, 5.2,000, 5.3, So each year this one's growing by $0.1,000 or $100. So this one's going up $100 each year. The second one starts at 10,000 and is going up point um, one five per year because we're going 10 to 10.15 to 10.3 to 10.45 to 10.6. So this one's going up 0.15, which is $150. So this one's going up $150 each year. So define the amount of money in thousands of dollars. So don't use the 100 and 150. We want to use the 0.1 and 0.15. For accounts A and B as functions of time, where T, um, T years since 2000. So use function notation. So I'm just going to call this first one A of T. So account A over time. This one started at $5,000. And then after each year, we added $0.1,000. So 5 plus 0.1 T. And then for account B, we started with $10,000 and each year we added $0.15,000. So will these accounts ever equal each other and explain how you know? So no, they won't because this one starts at 5,000 and goes up 100. This one starts at 10,000, which is more and it's increasing by 150 each year. So account B starts higher and grows faster. So they'll never equal. So if this one was growing by 200 and this one was growing by 150, they would. Or if this one started lower, they would. But since this one starts higher and grows faster, they'll never match each other.